four tips for handling haters and overcoming negative people in your life. So do you have any haters or negative people telling you what you can't do right now? They just nagging on you, saying you're not going to become a real estate investor. Oh, house flipping, that's all a scam. Oh, don't be an idiot. Are they, are they telling you what you can't do when you know what you're capable of doing? Maybe it's a spouse that's just always on your case about anything you want to do new, special, and different. Or maybe you're younger and your parents are upset that you're spending so much time watching videos like this and not getting ready for college. Well, if you've got a lot of negativity in your life, you're going to love this video because I'm going to give you four practical tips that you can use to handle that kind of um, influence in your life. And it's probably not something you've ever heard before. This, this is not a regurgitation. This is unique and special. And if you don't have any hate and negativity in your life, uh, just wait. It's coming. Now, I'm Phil Pustiowski. I'm a real estate mentor and coach to many of the most successful real estate investors all across North America. And although most of my videos are the nuts and bolts of investing in real estate, this video is just as important, if not more so, than anything else I share with you. And it's because nothing can demotivate you faster and more effectively than certain influences in your life who throw out negative comments that like taking a big bucket of water on a fire and just putting out every bit of enthusiasm you have for something new and special and different. Now, I am uh, also the author of two books. The first one, How to Be a Real Estate Investor. My newest one, Real Estate Investing Gone Bad. Both of these are perennial bestsellers and they are must reads for anyone who is serious about becoming a real estate investor. This YouTube channel, is number one for real estate investing all across the world and it has now broken some pretty exciting milestones over a hundred thousand subscribers over 11 million views that also means that there literally have been thousands and thousands of comments most of them are positive but some of them have been very negative would you like to hear some of the more intense hatred negative comments I've gotten on this YouTube channel? Alright, listen to these. Eric Eubanks writes, Go F-U-C-K yourself. You are proof of how ignorant people still are after 20 years of internet access. There's some hate. Here's LaDon Malone. This one's actually kind of funny. Hey Phil, there's an island sitting on top of your head. Go invest in that. Actually, I'm kind of thankful I've been losing my hair over the years. It gives me a little bit more uh, of a look of distinguish and maturity. Thank you, LaDon. ZD Wade writes, invest in clothes, time at the gym, and some hair plugs. You look like a douche. Now, uh, investing in clothes, no, this, this is not something that's going to bring me any money back, but... He is right. I mean, I should spend some more time at the gym. And uh, I, I, see, I disagree with the hair plugs. I like being bald. All right, Thomas Stab says, Did you ever consider the fact that you're moving your head too much when you speak? Most want to read your lips while they listen. You bob your head like you are something special. What an ASS hole. I don't bob my head. What is he talking about? Next one. Actually, this is the last one. I could go on for a long time, but this is a good way to end it. Long Qua Missionary. So this is a missionary. Writes, Dear Phil, kill yourself, please. All right. Not very positive, is it? So how do I handle haters? How do I overcome negativity? Well, these four tips is what I've learned from the real world, learned from mentors, learned from so many other people, and I think it can be very fruitful for you to apply these in your life. All right, number one lesson is when you've got hate, when you've got negativity, I want you to get excited. Get excited. What am I talking about? So, a very famous music producer who is going to be in the Country Music Hall of Fame starting this fall, he was fantastic, a genius, according to Dolly Parton, of being able to spot talent. And one of his great rules was this. 
If the person had as many haters as fans, he knew they were going to be a big star. So if he had someone who didn't have that kind of electricity, either positive or negative, he was always concerned that they wouldn't be a big star. And so you might not be looking at becoming a big country music star, but the principle still applies even on a small level. So if you're working on a real estate deal and um, it looks like it could make some good money and then the seller flips out on you, starts going crazy, telling you how awful you're a scam artist and you're going to jail and they're, cr they're going crazy, get excited. Why? Because you probably have a good deal on your hands. See, when everything is um, balanced and normal, it doesn't necessarily mean you got something great or, 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 or comparatively bad. Now on the other side of the coin, if you're at a closing table and the seller is very happy and so nice to you, like overly nice, like can I get you some water, that's when you have to be a little concerned. Because maybe, just maybe, you're about to buy a lemon, some bad deal that's not going to work out. So when people are being negative to you, you got to get excited because it means you're pressing their buttons, which might mean you're about to make some big moves in your life, which might be exciting. Maybe in a, on a more uh, personal level, maybe it's a spouse or friend or significant other uh, parent that's, that is concerned that if you become more successful, then you may not need them anymore. And uh, that happened to one of my apprentices where she was in an abusive relationship and what ended up happening was her spouse wanted nothing to do with her being in, in, in our program. Well, she did it anyways, kind of behind his back. She made a bunch of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And um, not that I'm proud of this, but uh, she up and left him. She said, look, I'm done with your abuse. I'm gone. And she left. And so um, the point here is that if people are being negative or hating on you, get excited. Because you're probably doing something right assuming you're not doing something truly illegal or, or bad. I mean, you're, you're trying your best to, to improve your life and then people are getting mad at you. Okay, so number one, get excited. Number two, pray for your haters. Pray. I'm serious. You have no idea the kind of pain other people are experiencing in their life. A, a family member of mine, they had, uh, they had just bought a new home. I had helped them buy the house. Um, and when they moved in, the neighbor to one side was annoyed because they, it was a new built home and so it kind of blocked some of their view of the water. But on the other side, they, ha they thought they had a, a wonderful little family to, you know, to their other side. And um, Anyways, one day he was, uh, he was going to, to pick the trash back up, uh, the, the barrels because they had been picked up and uh, the neighbor came out and said, hey, I, I need to talk to you. And so my, my fan member was like, yeah, sure. How's it going? Yeah, yeah. What's going on? Well, I, I'm just really concerned because you've only lived in this house for like three months and you're not here very often. I mean, you're gone a lot. I mean, what, what's that all about? My fan member was like, I, I, I travel. I, I, my business requires me to travel. Well, yeah, well, it makes me nervous that you're gone a lot. Like something else is going on over there. Fan member was like, what? And then as the person was walking away, she was like, oh, and you leave your trash out here way too long. I could call the HOA on you, you know. How about you get your trash a little bit earlier? Whoa. So my fan member was like, man, that was weird. What an ASS hole, right? Um, well, uh, he goes inside, tells a story, and uh, his son goes, oh, well, Dad, you have no idea. Uh, she, uh, she just lost her husband. He just, one morning, they just woke up and her husband was dead. And it, it was some rare heart condition. They didn't even know he had. He just, they had two grade school kids. And then he's just dead one day. And you know, you just don't know what someone else is going through in their life. So when you've got uh, hatred, yeah, get excited that maybe on a, on a more grand scale, you know, you've got something exciting going on. But by the same token, if it's real personal, um, and they're just being out of the ordinary mean, pray for them. Find out what's going on in their life. Because they may have some real pain going on. Typically the people that are the most confident, the most balanced, um, they're not hating on others, right? It's just, the, the haters usually have other problems going on in their life. Number three, stop pleasing others. Stop pleasing others. 
We are wired to want to make other people around us happy and pleased. The problem is people are fickle. Studies have proven that humans are terrible predictors of their own happiness. So if you're trying to please other people, it is a moving target that you'll never hit. And in fact, if other people are telling you that your decisions are ruining their life, like I recently heard where someone invested in some real estate and the, uh, the person's family member said, I can't believe you've done this. You've, you, you literally are ruining my life. I can't believe you'd spend money on a scam like investing in real estate. And this person was really distraught over the whole situation. And I remember correspondents saying, uh, what you do with your money should have no effect on other people. Uh, that, that's not their problem. It's, it's, excuse me, it's not your problem, it's their problem. So trying to please others, that is a treadmill where you'll keep running and running and you'll make no progress. This is a lot easier said than done, but you've got to run your own race. So if you're trying to please others, you're going to continually fail. That's why when I put these videos together, I do appreciate the, the feedback I get, some of the negativity. I, I'm, I am humble about learning from how I can improve, but by the same token, I'm going to put out the kind of trainings that I know are the truth. And I'm not going to please everybody. And in fact, some of the videos I've put out, I've pissed off a lot of people. I'm doing the best I can. right? And I'm not going to try to make everybody happy because you just won't. Oh, and on this topic, I do not recommend using negativity from other people as some sort of fuel for you to just get off your butt and get it done. Oh man, I told you I couldn't do it. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do it. No, that's once again pleasing people. So if someone tells you you can't do something and then you go off and try to do it because they told you you can't, they're controlling you. They're, they're holding the strings of you as the puppet. I don't agree with that. Look, you do things based on uh, what you feel is exactly what needs to be done in your life. Now, I'm a Christian, so obviously I pray the Lord gives me guidance. And for Christians, that's obviously the number one place to get your, uh, your directives. However, Either way, it doesn't involve other people telling you how to live your life. And just like a, a throwback to the movie Back to the Future, when he um, when it's Are you Chicken McFly? And of course he he then of course all rears up. See, that's not what you want to do. Don't use that as fuel. You be in control of your own life. And number four, study greatness. Study those that have overcome a tremendous amount of negativity and hatred in their life to go on to great things. A great example of this would be one of my favorite people of all time, Dr. Martin Luther King. That man, as well as many around him that were part of that movement, had to overcome enormous amounts of hatred and negativity. And what they did changed the world. Look at some of the things in light of these other three steps. When we talked about get excited, well, what they were doing had a lot of electricity, right? And what it was all about was so needed in this country. So they were getting excited as they saw that movement rolling. It was sad that they had so much opposition, but they knew they were on the right track when they had all that hatred. Uh, number two, they certainly prayed. When you look at what Martin Luther King did in one example, he got shot by a guy. You know, I might be paraphrasing the story, but I remember reading his biography about this. And uh, instead of attacking the guy and ripping the gun out of his hand and all that, instead he, he gave the guy a hug and he prayed for him. Because anybody shooting Dr. King had some real issues, right? Because the man was doing something amazing. All right, number three, stop pleasing. I can assure you Dr. King was not pleasing a lot of people when in front of a hostile crowd in Washington, D.C., he said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Well, Dr. King, I still have that dream today because racism is completely out of hand in this country, and it is so sad. In fact, it was Dr. King who pointed out that the most segregated hour in America is Sunday morning. I mean, if you're a Christian, then you know that we're a child of God. We all are, and He created us all in his own plan. So if any part of America should be multicultural and should break down those racial barriers, it should be the church. 
which is why I go to a multicultural church. In fact, I'm one of the only Caucasian families in the room, hallelujah, and I love it. So I hope this provides you with some concrete steps on how you can handle hatred and overcome negativity in your life. And if you don't have that in your life yet, just wait. As you begin to improve your situation, it's going to happen. There's an analogy where uh, you can see in, in a, where crabs are in a box. And if one of the crabs is trying to crawl out of the box, the other crabs will rip them down and bring them back into the box. Well, that's probably happening to you if you're experiencing negativity. People are trying to pull you back into their world. Well, this is how you can overcome that. I hope you're inspired by this message. I hope this affects a lot of people. Share this with others as well because this is really important. It's not just about how to find the best deals and how to structure the best deals. Real estate is also about how you progress forward as an individual. All right, well, if you want to learn more about what we're doing, go to freedommentor.com. You can learn there that I mentor people along with my team one-on-one, -on -one, and we turn them into money-making real estate machines. And we mentor on more than just real estate, as you can tell here in this message. Also, pick up my books, How to Be a Real Estate Investor. Whoops! How to Be a Real Estate Investor. Real Estate Investing Gone Bad. Subscribe to this channel, watch more of these videos because I have a treasure trove of wisdom in these free videos. And you can read the comments. Uh, people have already vetted these videos out for you. They're the real deal. They provide the signal, the truth out there. All right, well, I look forward to seeing you on the very next video. Thanks again for watching.